I've no doubt that I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this video. Kind of clickbait, right? Uh, HK design flaw. I do think that there, this is a design flaw in that they cheapened up their design and it's not living up to its full potential that HK kind of proved itself to be capable of when they made the Mark 23 and the original full-size USP. And the key to the, the USP and the Mark 23 is its recoil reduction system. This is where HK got its durability, legendary durability uh, statements from. So everybody's like, oh, HK, it's the best, right? Well, not really, not, not since uh, the USP. And the USP Compact was the start of them going downhill by basically replacing a, an entire spring system with stupid, cheap-ass nylon buffers. Now, this is the P30L. This is a, just kind of a drawing of the P30L. This is the full-size USP. And we're going to talk about the different systems and how they work, the forces that they're under, and stuff like that to kind of... Kind of put my argument out there in a bit of a different way than a lot of people do. So anyways, as you can see here, you've got a piece of nylon that's probably around, got a piece of aluminum that's holding it on. Now, the idea behind this is to actually uh, encapsulate the aluminum or encapsulate the nylon to keep it all in place and probably uh, uh, direct the shock uh, directly through the nylon instead of like um, allowing it allowing the nylon to bulge out a little bit to just to keep it in form. I'm guessing that would be the main reason is to add a little bit of a redundant cap to keep it from bulging out. I mean, it works, but it also seems kind of cheap to do that. Uh, now, it is a wear component. You can actually have it replaced or whatever, but I would just replace the whole system because by the time this actually gives out, uh, your flat wire recoil spring is uh, probably losing some poundage too. Now, I did like the idea that they're using a flat wire recoil spring because you're typically going to get longer life and they use a relatively thick uh, spring on this as you can see a little bit thicker than what you're going to see on a Glock it's probably around USP kind of uh, thickness but it's not seeing full compression uh, and you can see that because it's it stops here and so yeah so it stops about here so you're getting uh, getting it compressed around uh, here so it's not getting a full compression. So you're not using the full force of the spring, and you're not using the full life of it as it's recoiling back and forth. Now, the other design consideration that you're going to look at in the P30 is it's not going to glide back and forth. You can see here, I have the little pins. This one, when it's pinned in place, you're going to have contact with the pin and the frame. Now, with the USP, it actually has to come back a ways, and that accounts for the big swoop that you see in the USP here because this pin it's supposed to have that much room freedom of movement before it actually lightly taps the polymer uh, part of the frame and it's just a little piece of it's like a polymer bridge you could say and all these systems have it this is the polymer bridge I'm talking about right here so that's the that's your little polymer bridge now on the P30 you're going to insert it and you're going to insert that piece stick it in and it's this little piece is making contact the guide rod is making contact with the frame uh up against here so whenever you shoot and the slide uh goes back and the barrel cams it is making contact with the frame you are going to feel that vibration now you can see here is where the frame actually should be hit by the slide on a conventional pistol so, uh, it probably would do that if you if you uh, didn't have this buffer in place. It probably would actually impact the frame around that area. I think I don't. Well, probably not because this little piece right here would probably block it. But anyways, uh, it goes in a little bit further than that, as you can see. So sorry about the focus, but you can see that it never actually contacts the frame. It's supposed to hit this and then buffer some of the shock, like the vibration that goes through it, and the nylon will slightly compress, and I think that's why it has a little bit of metal wrapped around it. Now, with the standard USPs, uh, or the USP Compacts, the P2000, and the regular P30s, not the L version, you have a thin piece of nylon that's about this big. It's not really all that big. And it doesn't need metal to encapsulate it because basically this little bit of extra frame here is keeping it all 
uh, all contained so it doesn't bulge out when the when the slide is slamming up against it. So you are getting more vibration into the system with the P30 than you do with the USP. Not only that, but you are you're putting about equal stress on and delivering more vibration uh, through the P30 than you are the USP40. And that's really uh, told by this piece of this little wear area right here. So you can see right here, this is where the pin actually gets vibrated against and smacked against. Whenever the uh, pistol is fired and the barrel comes back, it's, it tries to go rearward like this. And it goes into the frame, uh, into the polymer bridge, and it also hits, the pin hits right in the front here. And you can see that little wear uh, that little wear mark right there. Now is that a big deal? Not necessarily. However, you are showing that you're having more um, more parts of the frame deliver, getting more vibration and stuff. So it, it is getting more wear than the USP would. Now <clears throat> the pins, the takedown pins in both the P30 and the USP are uh, supported by a stainless steel structure. However, on the USP, you can see here, the wear marks on the USP are, at least on the takedown pin, these are where the stainless steel supports are on the sides here. So you can see the front here is barely touched. There's really not much wear here uh, where it actually uh, impacts in this area. So you can see this is where the pin glides back and forth from vibration. The front has almost no wear on it, barely any contact right here. And, you know, that's just kind of the way the USP rocks. And so you can see all that extra movement area where it can, it can move back and forth uh, before it actually hits that polymer bridge right there. And again, sorry about the focus, um, but that's how, it's, that's how it's built to operate. And so if you look at this system, it can move freely back and forth about this far so it's almost not even hitting the polymer bridge at all. It would just be uh, sort of hitting against the takedown lever, but the reason why the USP is more superior, now that we can get into the USP, is because it has a double uh, spring system. Now, the idea behind the spring system is, where's that piece of chalk? So the, this piece right here is gonna be inside the slide, right? So that's the front portion right here front part of the dongy, right? So this piece is going to come back with the slide and it's going to hit right up against this. This piece is secured up against the frame. So you have the frame right here. It's secured up against the frame. Now, as you can see here, just like the P30, it is not actually going to hit the frame. It's going to hit this metal piece. These two pieces of metal are going to go together and then it's going to start a secondary compression. Now you can see that the spring, the whole guide rod, is as one. And it's one with the camming block. And it's a really powerful spring, but it allows the whole guide rod to move back some. As you can see here. So it'll move back and it'll be able to travel. But this piece is held up against the frame. So... So the slide will hit up against here and it'll try to meet the frame. It'll try to compress this spring right here. And this spring is really heavy. As you saw, I can't really push it without shaking. But this whole system has a relatively weak recoil spring on the outside. So the general rearward movement is going to be pretty weak. It's gonna be very easy to pull the slide back and manipulate it. But when it gets back to here, you're looking at like a lot of force that's resisting that slide coming back and it slows the slide down. So by the time it actually contacts the front portion of this takedown pin, uh, it's really not all that much force. And as you can see, like even if it could actually hit the polymer bridge, it's gonna have almost no force by the time it gets there. So that's why the USP is basically impervious to plus P plus P plus. It's not really gonna hurt the system because Damn near no force is actually being put on the frame, except for what the spring allows. And it's a spring push. It's, it's more of a push than it is a, a smack. So the P30, on the other hand, whatever vibration the nylon is not going to give, 
it's going to be transferred directly into the frame. Now, now the points on the frame are pretty small as far as like the contact points for the uh, for the frame. I mean, they're tiny. They're just like a cup a millimeter or so of uh, of contact with the uh, buffer, but that's still very direct, and that's going straight into the stainless steel skeleton that is all around this takedown pin and supporting uh, this right here. So whenever the forces are coming back, it's supported by a stainless steel skeleton. But the same for the USP. The USP, if you x-ray it, it has a stainless steel skeleton around the takedown pin and all the areas that would, in, would get some of those forces. So the USP is a superior design. It still is a superior design. And that's why HK is probably never going to get rid of it. Uh, I mean, there's just not some. This is not something that you can really improve upon. They've only taken a step down by going to nylon. You know what they could do if they wanted to keep nylon? If this is all nylon right here, and this is all nylon right here, they could keep this little piece of metal right here, at least for the P30L. And now I get that the P30 itself, USB compacts and the P2000, they have a tiny little uh, nylon buffer. I get it. They're sacrificing with going with a smaller pistol. Uh, however, what you can do is you can sandwich kind of a rounded spring, basically adapt this spring system to here. So it can actually compress a little bit. So you can have basically the same system just sheathed in a piece of aluminum. And it would work a little bit differently than this, so the guy rod wouldn't move back and forth. But this little piece of nylon right here uh, would absorb a lot of the shock, and then the spring would be responsible for keeping it uh, guided, or uh, not guided, but slowing it down. And that little piece of aluminum sheath right there would guide it and keep it all in line. That, that would be my idea. Uh, that would be the way I would run it, but... You know, I'm not, I'm not a gun engineer, so I can't exactly sell this idea to HK or whatever. Uh, not that they would listen to me anyways, but uh, that would be my way of adapting it to the 21st century. Now, you see stuff like this uh, being applied to, like, the P30SK or the P2000SK, where they're putting in double spring systems and stuff. Uh, still, I think those are cheapened, because I think that they could have a miniaturized version of this, or a better way of doing things. I just think that they could have done things a lot better. Um, but anyways, uh, that's my argument for why I think HK has cheapened their designs. No thanks, HK. I think that you could have done better. Not that the pistols are bad, not that they don't have good durability, at least in the P30L and the P30 and the P2000, not that the nylon buffer doesn't work, but it's not exactly a good representation of HK's capability. So you cannot say that the glory days of the Mark 23 and the USP uh, are carried on into the 21st century because nylon versus a, versus a nice spring system that is actually guaranteed to extend the life of the frame and the components, big difference. So anyways, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Hate, love, whatever. <laughs> and you guys have a good one.